In this section we'll be covering both hypo and hyperparathyroidism. Okay, so we're going to start with hypoparathyroidism. So in hypo, and, and the first thing I want to say before we go any further is this. There's seldom times that things are easy in medicine, but this is one of them. If we talk about parathyroid disorder, I want you to remember, number one, it's all about calcium, and number two, that they go together. So a decreased parathyroid hormone decreases your serum calcium. And we'll see next that an increased parathyroid hormone increases your serum calcium. So first, remember parathyroid calcium. Second, remember that they go together. Low parathyroid means low calcium. So everything we're going to talk about about our patient's presentation and a question is going to relate to a hypocalcemic state. And we're talking about serum calcium. So let's take a, a little physiology moment here and just make sure that we remember the way things work and that there are three organ systems responsible for our serum and urine calcium levels um, in our body. And they're all affected by parathyroid hormone. So normally when parathyroid hormone is uh, increased and present, we're going to have absorption in the gut, we're going to have resorption from the bone, so that there'll be more serum calcium, and we're, we're going to have the kidney reabsorb or keep the calcium. So this means the urine calcium then will be decreased once parathyroid goes up. So that's the parathyroid physiology. Now, in a hypoparathyroid state, what happens? Well, if there's not enough parathyroid, the gut is going to not absorb as much calcium. The calcium is going to stay in the bone, and it's not going to end up going to uh, the serum. And the kidney is going to let it go, so you'll have an increased calcium in the urine and uh, you'll decrease the serum calcium in the end. So this is where we are from a physiological standpoint and how is this going to affect our body. So there's different symptoms. The main symptoms are paresthesia, cramping, fasciculation, fatigue. Now these are difficult because they're not very specific. Now patchy hair loss, dry skin, brittle nails, guess what? That also can happen in hypothyroidism. So these are not specific things to drag us to one or the other and therefore probably won't help us determine anything on a question. However, the cramping and fasciculation and paresthesia are specific more to the hypocalcemic state here. So remember, it's any hypocalcemic state that can have these symptoms. There are two signs that are also specific to a hypocalcemic state and therefore would be seen possibly in a hypoparathyroid patient. It's Trousseau's sign and Chostec. So you need to know these. And Trousseau's is exactly as it says here, carpal pedal spasm with inflation of a blood pressure cup um, greater than the systolic pressure, whatever it is, for greater than three minutes. So in carpal pedal, you can do it on the arm, you can do it on the leg. So we have spasm in, in the hand or foot and it's related to the blood pressure cuff being elevated uh, greater than the, the systolic pressure. In Chostec, you're tapping the same side of the face and you're gonna see this little twitching that occurs in the, in the face. Uh, there's some good YouTube, you can look for both of these. Either way, uh, we're going to uh, look for treatment, which is the same, which is replacement of the calcium. Now it's true, people who are significantly hypo Parathyroid can be very, very sick, and we can see these type of symptoms here. We don't expect that, but you can put seizure together along with uh, Parkinsonian symptoms in those cases. So again, our, uh, our treatment is oral calcium and vitamin D to keep the serum calcium greater than 8. So remember, a serum calcium greater than 8 is your goal in treatment of hypoparathyroidism. The main cause is surgical removal or trauma, so we're not going to be able to replace that. Um, and... I also want you to remember too, radiation to the neck and chronic hypomagnesemia. Remember that uh, phosphorus and magnesium and calcium, phosphorus and magnesium, they really can't be separated in the way they're dealt with and they affect each other. So chronic hypomagnesemia, I also want in my brain as a cause of hypoparathyroidism. If we talk about hyperparathyroidism, well now it's the exact opposite of what we talked about before. So if we we look at our, our little diagram here. The difference is, obviously, we have increased absorption of calcium from the gut. We're making the gut work more. Remember that. We're making the gut work more. So maybe we'll get some abdominal pain and cramping. We're actually increasing calcium resorption. So more calcium is going from the bone into the blood so I can have osteoporosis. 
And in the calcium side with the kidney, we're dealing with increased absorption, so we're keeping it and we're not having as much in the urine. So when we look at this as a clinical presentation, what are the presentations? We talk about bone, stones, abdominal moans, and psychic groans. Osteoporosis, renal calculi, bone pain, GI symptoms, depression, and psychosis. All right. So like we said, think it out. If I'm making my gut absorb more, I get the GI cramping. It's usually an abdominal cramping. Osteoporosis, because I'm letting the calcium leave my bones. Renal calculi, because of what's going on in the kidney. Remember, they go together, so increased parathyroid hormone means increased hypercalcemia or increased calcium. Now, we do need to differentiate in our mind the difference between hyperparathyroidism, which is primary, and which is secondary. So in hypoparathyroidism, it's almost always primary due to destruction or trauma to the gland or surgical removal. But in hyperparathyroidism, it is either primary or secondary. Now, primary can be adenoma, hyperplasia, or malignancy, which is extremely rare. But secondary is the most common cause here. And the most common cause of secondary hyperparathyroidism is chronic kidney disease. And this results from the body's inability to convert vitamin D because the kidneys are obviously ailing. Without conversion of vitamin D, it doesn't work properly. The body cannot absorb calcium properly. It results in a short-term hypocalcemic state, which there, in turn, causes a hyperparathyroid state in an attempt to raise the calcium levels. So chronic renal failure causes chronic secondary hyperparathyroidism. Now, anyone with hyperparathyroidism for a prolonged period of time um, can have osteoporosis, and those treatments may include bisphosphonates, denosumab, or teriparatide, and that will be covered in orthopedics. Treatment of our uh, hyperparathyroid state depends on what's wrong. So if it's a primary hyperparathyroidism, surgical removal 90% of the time. If it's a secondary hyperparathyroidism, we need to address the underlying problem. Now, if it's chronic kidney disease, we can't fix that, so we're going to be looking for medications. If it's chronic calcium or vitamin D, D deficiency, obviously we can, we can uh, address those deficiencies. So remember, it's surgical removal if we're talking about a primary, but that if we're dealing with uh, secondary hyperparathyroidism, we're probably going to be looking at these medications. Now, uh, Sinusolet can be used for either. It's still mostly used for secondary. Um, Paracalcitol can be used only for secondary. And these are both very commonly used in end-stage renal disease. So remember what we said, these specific symptoms, bone stones, abdominal moans, and psychiatric, psychiatric overtones. So how do we differentiate a hypo or hyperparathyroid? Number one, number one, number one. Remember, low hormone, low calcium, high hormone, high calcium. Remember that, please. Remember those specific symptoms to either hypoparathyroidism. We can see, if you want to remember, tingling, tetany, trousseaus. That might be an easy way to, in an alliteration to remember. And that it's trousseaus and Jostek's sign. Remember that it's these guys I'm more worried about because these can be common to other disorders and may or may not help you on the dis the question to differentiate where you're going. Remember bone stones, abdominal groans, psychiatric overtones, however you want to remember these guys here, very important with hyperparathyroidism.